Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with... Andy Peregrine, again, uh, creative lead on Dune Adventures in the, Mid- in the Imperium. And today we're going to talk about their latest source book, yeah. Powers and Pawns, The Emperor's Court. Yeah. Uh, that looks sweet. Um, it really is, yes. So, <laughs> so uh, the, the name's very self-explanatory, but mm. what is this source book about? Well, this has gone through a certain amount of iterations, and it's originally we were going to entitle it a sort of advanced setting source book. This is sort of your final level up, and as such, it also finishes off the last of the Imperium. It pairs up very nicely with the great game. So this has been our steps as we move off Arrakis into the wider Imperium and the wider setting of Dune. And to a certain degree, it kind of completes the setting as a first whole. Um, This book lets us go, we've now got something of everything in the game now with this one. And uh, obviously we've got plenty more to do. Don't think it's it's finished by any means, but this completes all of the basics. It's it's kind of got, kind of gives the setting its black belt to a certain degree. And so what this means is the core of the book is about your characters becoming not just the agents of your house, but the leaders of your house. We finally delve into how they can become the roles that we've been talking about since the core book, uh, including house ruler and and the like, Uh, what those roles really mean, and also a load of political detail about how you take that off someone else. Uh, Dune is not always a game about um, just going, oh, I, I would like to be awarded this because I've worked very hard. No, you've got to get the guy in front of you out of the way first. That's very much how it works. Now, it might be because you think you'll be a better person to serve the house than they do, or it might just be you want to kill the guy in charge and uh, so you can take his place. That depends on you. But there's a lot of different ways of doing it, and it's not just as easy as saying, I've earned it now. So you're doing that. We also look at how your house can move up, indeed, not just from minor to major, but to take greater power in, as the title suggests, the emperor's court itself. We move up from house politics among the Landsrat into imperial politics, where you're moving in the very highest circles of the Imperium, where the whispering in the right ear can move worlds and change whole destinies. So this is is where you're in the real core of of the uh, controlling the universe, really. uh, But in addition to that, we also reach out into all the secrets of some of the really high-level characters and set, settings and factions that people might have wanted to play for a while but were a bit too off the wall for um for just ordinary play so we look at player character Saudakar, player character face dancers player character Ginas sword masters and these people have been screaming for Ginas sword masters for a very long time and um and they're all things that become difficult to play this the powers and abilities of them are already, they're not very complicated because they work, they have the same thing, they have particular talents and you lead them towards particular skills and styles. The trick with Dune, as always, quite often, is how you bring that into your campaign. And that's what we needed to spend the time explaining in detail. Um, Saudakar being a particularly good example. You know, they, like the Fremen, have a load of extra talents that are really cool for fighting and and all those sort of things that's very straightforward but of course they are absolutely loyal to the emperor there is no sadhaka who goes oh i had an argument with the emperor i've changed my mind no 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 no. No, you are loyal to the emperor that is it end of story however it is quite possible your house might have been gifted one of these incredible elite soldiers by the emperor for their service of course, that might be a gift because the emperor thinks you should be rewarded. Might also be a gift because the emperor thinks someone needs to keep an eye on you. So what they're actually doing is, and it may be a case of the side of the car is it's like the Order 66 in Star Wars. Or whatever. It's the, oh yeah, he's there to help your house because he's been ordered to help your house. But at any time, the emperor might go, you know what, take them all out. And that's going to be a very long night for everybody. 
Mm-hmm. So it's things like that. The same with Chilaxu face dancers. You know, they are they have loyalties to different factions, and of course, the Ginnar Sword Masters are just difficult because they go away from the campaign for four years and come back with an array of abilities that can throw a Fremen across the room. So there are all manner of different ways that we've adapted and, and played with things to make sure that your campaign is set up in such a way that you can bring these in in a seamless fashion and give them all of the extra campaign and setting detail they need to make sure that they fit without just being thrown in and, and look like we sort of chucked all the factions together and stirred them in a pot. Uh, so this is six chapters, uh, yeah. about about a little over 140, uh, close to 150 pages. Um, yeah. And uh, let, let's so chapter one, uh, the, the Imperial Throne I, again, uh, self-explanatory. But uh, what can you tell us about this? Uh, it looks like uh, you mentioned the sort of car as as uh, uh, being yeah. used, but now they could be used as player characters. Yeah, um, and that's sort of the extra section. What that chapter is mainly about is politicking in the Imperial Court. What is Kaitain like? What is the Emperor's? We move into we now we've touched on a lot of these things with the great game we talk about the lands rad because that's all on kaitain but in here we talk a little bit more about kaitain as a planet about the imperial palace what you're expected to be like how you um one of my favorite lists is a list of spurious titles you might claim because one of the things in in this game is you might become um the Lord Marshal of, of the Wednesday Court, for instance. And that might mean absolutely nothing. It might mean you get to stand with a big stick and announce people coming into the court. And you might have taken years to earn this position. And other people might think it's absolutely useless. But if you play it correctly, you go, well, if no one actually is allowed to enter the court until I announce them, then I have the power to decide who gets to see the emperor on Wednesdays. Now, that is an ability that I can get money for, get favours, and really use to increase my own personal power. So it's all of these little games. It's, you can get all kinds of odd things from the court, but it's always entirely up to your players as to how they use them. And if they can use basically everything as a lever, everything as an asset, be it a title or a lasgun or whatever you have, and it's about how you use that to leverage what you want to get. So, you know, that's, you know, already titles bringing in all kinds of extra politics things as well. And it talks about the life of court, you know, where you can go to the theatre, where you might see the emperor and things like that, and how you can get his attention as well, things like that. Chapter two, The Outsiders. Is this pretty much the um, uh, introduction of how players can be involved in this, this, this yeah. setting? So we deal primarily with this. This is the Ixians and the Chilaxu, and I think we've got the guild again. I will have to let me quickly flick into the book. Yes, of course, the Swordmasters and the Souk School get their own sections as well, because again, we wanted to make sure all of the original factions from the book, they all get their time to get expanded and get more detail on them. So we've looked at, and we're looking in the Chilaxu, we of course look at Twisted Mentats again, but there's also some powers for Ordinary Mentats. And there's new powers for super schools in there, as well as all the new factions, all the new shiny stuff. There is some expansion to all of these previous factions, you know, as well. So there's a lot of lot of things there for everybody. But we're also dealing extra potential campaigns. So you might want to set your entire campaign on X and deal with that, and then connect to the Imperium in that way, or even you know, it will help you with among the Chilaxu, and uh, and your campaign might all be about how you can bring the Chilaxu way and manipulating uh, into the Imperium to try and get what the Chilaxu are after, um, which is never good. So all kinds of bits and pieces about that. But how each of these outsiders are somehow, in some way, they are still technically houses or courts or auctions and part of the, the Imperium and the Emperor's um, domain, but somehow they've taken a sidestep and how they balance that sidestep with everything else and the other responsibilities and uh, things of the, um, of the Empire and the Imperium is the interesting part of the campaign. It's a whole new campaign world to take off the bat as well. There's a section in here in this chapter called uh, a Game Mastery Technology Under New Equipment and, and Technology. Yes. Um, would you mind expanding a little bit what this section is about? I think, I think I know what the purpose of this is, but I 
I, I'm glad that it exists because sometimes I think, especially when you're doing with such a, I mean, this is like, like future sci-fi setting, um, where you, you can imbalance things if you're not too careful how technology is used. Mm. Yeah. Now we've got detail on basically creating your own stuff, how to make your stuff feel Dune-like and how to use that technology. Now, one of the biggest options is potentially cybernetics, which of course comes with the extra thing of, is this a person becoming a machine, which of course has religious connotations in Dune as well. Um, but there are also details. The, the thing about Dune and its technology is it's almost quite seamless because it's so advanced. Everything is, is small and functions in vastly powerful ways. So. We've got some detail on how you game master it and what what it almost like what is there left to invent? Um you know, what else could they do? And things for and things that they may have decided, uh, for instance, that there isn't any warp travel. There is a faster than light system on spacecraft, but it's still nowhere near as quick as taking a guild highlighter, folding space across from one side of the galaxy to another. So there are some things you don't have, some things you do, and some of that chapter details a little bit more about how to create that flavour and balance things that players go, I think we should have a thing that does this, and how you can make that feel more Dune-like and bring that into your setting. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, chapter three, society. Um, it looks, is this the section, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is this the section that looks like that everything from chapters one and two you get to actually implement so you could create a story setting based on the lore that you've been given yes uh, we've got a lot of base and this one yes is the section we had uh, john wick i, I got into to write a lot of this chapter as well because uh, i know he's um deeply cunning and manipulative and <laughs> in all the best ways um, <laughs> you no know, the guy who created the Badachi. I think, yeah, he was my guy for this. And um, it's amazing. He's brought in some really great publishers because one of the things we haven't been able to really get into, which is, of course, one of the key parts of Dune, is politics because it is a difficult thing to role play. It's a difficult thing for a GM to create, to offer these opportunities. It's also something that players need to drive themselves. You, don't, you can't say, oh, uh, a minister wants you to help him with his intrigue. That's all a little bit, you're becoming agents of a minister. What you need with politics is the players to say, we want this vote to go our way because we need this to happen. And how are they going to go about it? And we've got a wonderful section basically addressing the players, saying how you could start these things and addressing the GM and saying how you can either bring this in, how you can help teach your players and work with your players to create these very player driven scenarios which is a thing i always love particularly as a gm i like it when the players take control and i'm then playing my setting as a character and so you know go crazy tell me what you want to do drive the adventure it makes my job so much easier um and it gives them the game they want let's get into it together and let's see where we can go with this so but you need advice you need some help and we have details on that and of course details on how you take on these roles how you push forward your house, whether you're working just for yourself as a player character, or whether you're working for the group of the player characters, or even the large group of your actual house, and trying to push that forward. So there's all the various loyalties in play, and you can take those, you know, it depends on what your character is like, are you, you know, you're all about your own, um, own selfish needs, or are you actually serving your house? But either way, you need to use many of the same skills, and sometimes quite aggressive, um, brutal skills, to try and get your house where it needs to go because dune is a very unforgiving political landscape so it, um, it is not for the faint-hearted at all mm. uh chapter four controlling your house um so there's been other source books that um talk about how to create your house and and uh, mm. uh and making it uh functional and and uh, possibly try to survive in this uh political mm. environment is, is this like kind of the evolution of uh these ideas yeah, this moves more from taking the idea of politics in general and applying it more specifically to house politics, both within and without. So you are looking at how you push forward your particular house and also how, you know, this is where we detail the roles particularly and how they, they apply, but also how your players take those roles and how your players take control of your house. I mean, they may be the agents, but this is the, oh yes, you were never going to be in charge of the heirs. So they're saying, well, 
in this game, we're going to just we're going to become the heirs. We're going to take control of our house. It doesn't matter whether in front of us the heir or not. The ruling family has got us to take on. So there's lots of bits and pieces you can go there. And I think we also have, as I kind of forgot from the previous chapter, one of the things I'm very pleased about, we've also got a whole host of new drives. So to add it, as well as a whole host of new political talents as well, if you're on a very political campaign, loads of new powers and abilities and, and things for your player characters to take on. But I particularly mm. like the drives because one of the ones that we've been almost missing is, for instance, love, which is obviously one of Lady Jessica's main drives throughout the book. It's you know, it's her love for her duke is one of the things that it kind of leads to the tearing the whole universe down. So very important. But we've got some quite unpleasant ones. We have hate and greed and glory and things as well. And it's up to you, your GM, your players, but you can swap these out with the current drives that we have and you can mix and match. The GM might even say, oh, you're all going to be playing Harkonnen in this. So I want you all to get rid of your truth drive and you're all going to have the hatred drive is going to be you know, one of my standard five. So there's a load of extra detail there. Um, really take you, really working something new with drives and that you can expand and create new drives of your own as well. So you can, you can really adapt your characters that way. I'm really pleased with that one. I think we've got some, there's some really great character expansions you can do with that across the board with any character. Chapter five, Secrets of the Imperium. Um, uh, well, I guess mm. the first thing I should ask, like when I think, when I hear something, a title like that, is that, this is like Game Master specific only? Can no, players... I I can't tell you, it's clearly secret. So obviously I can't tell you anything about that chapter. Um, <laughs> the, this, is, this is kind of the GM's chapter, but a lot of players who've read the books will know a bit more about it. It's basically the secrets that people don't actually know in general about these things. So this is where we go into Guild Navigators, which I'm really pleased people love to see stats and powers and abilities for the Guild Navigators. Um, we've got detail on what the Chilaxi are actually up to, which is horrific. Um, if you are not already familiar with what uh, the Chilaxi actually do, be very careful as you approach that chapter. Um, and also detail, I think, on the uh, yes, the Guild, and of course, Six of Chome as well. And that brings us to an expansion that we started with the Great Game, where we have another option for a very powerful campaign where you are not just Chom agents, but Chom directors. Each character is the leader of their own house and you are sitting around a table running the mercantile structure of the Imperium together and the assets you can bring to bear against each other. So a sort of rivalry alliances campaign with each of you, each player running their own house um, and against their rivals, the other player characters, for who can make the most money and gain the most power through trade. Uh, so, again, who knew playing accountants could be a load of fun, um, which is which is what this one is very much about. So, mm. so uh, chapter six, Blood and Riches, great title. Uh, uh, yeah. This looks like this is an adventure that they can use yeah. based on this information and you have in the, the first five chapters. Yeah, it's as we do with all of our uh, adventures for the back of the book. It's not just a space filler, um, particularly not with, as we've got Rachel Wilkinson uh, does amazing work with adventures and uh, it's another one of hers. And this is a way to show you how to use all this stuff that we've just given you in this pilot book. What you've thrown in the cauldron and how you can turn it into something interesting for your game. In this case, the adventure takes you, puts you between two warring houses and gets you to sort them out. Uh, and the Emperor says do it, so you have to do it. And it's very much up to the player characters how much they can leverage out of this situation. Um, you know, if you just play, oh, we're going to just settle this and then move away, then you're not going to get as much out of it as you could. If you're going to start dealing with the other house and say, well, what will you give me if I make sure this happens? And there we have the crux of politics going on. And that's how your characters can gain an awful lot of power and favor uh, because there's some major players around them. So, and again, it's we give you the tools and the crowbars. So it's where you put those in and how you apply that leverage is entirely up to you. And uh, hopefully, ideally, your house won't get utterly crushed by the opposing forces it stands against. Uh, but, you know, we're playing with, you know, 
it's the, it's the big boys chapter this one so um you've got to, as we started with this game once you've started playing um moving into the bigger arenas then the stakes go up get higher but so do the rewards so hmm. you know what is your house going to seize for itself oh that's excellent this this hmm. this book sounds fantastic i don't and um i see what you meant earlier about like um this is the kind of the completion of the Arrakis, um like yeah. setting in a sense like the the, the mm -hmm. world because yeah this feels very uh not end game but like now it you could do a whole complete saga with this book now you could actually yeah. go up to the highest levels and have some really complicated and fantastic political mm -hmm. intrigue in these uh for your ventures um yeah. uh, so so if i may ask one last question if i may ask Absolutely. um you sort of hinted that now you want to the uh, well, Diffus wants to look outside of um, Arrakis. Um, is, is there any hints of where you might want to go? Oh, to, uh, well, we have. I say, Danny, I can feel him glaring at me as as I say these sort of things. Um, I think it's quite reasonable to say at, at this point that obviously we have the new movie coming up in November, and obviously we have a few plans around that to give not only some of our Dune players something new. But also, we'll, we'll be looking to try and find ways to bring people who've seen the second part of the movie into the game as well. Um, so we're trying to reward two groups again with with more products and things that will um, expand on the settings that they've seen in the movie and uh, what we've gained from that. And um, and there is still plenty more stuff we can do beyond that. We have many plans for books and things still, but this is I'd like to think of. Emperor's Court kind of puts the icing on the cake of the setting. So that's mm. that cake done. But there are so many other cake options that we can we just start on another cake. And of course, the, the next obvious thing is to start moving into different eras as well. So there'll be things like that coming up as well. You know, there's just so much to go. We've still got, you know, we've only, only covered about 10,000 years. So it's quite a lot more to go. Um, so there's plenty to do. And we'll try it's just trying to encapsulate everything and, and try and fit trying to fit this vast setting into some nice bite-sized books that we do because um i mean and, and i must say it's one we've we've had some people say when they've seen new books I mean, oh why have they got gone for these thin books uh, and i have to say in the diffius's defense for this one this is the size that the books were always actually meant to be but we had so much to try and push in and, and you know with masters dune and and sand dust um i have to constantly go back to modifius and say can i have an extra pages for this guy i need not uh and finally they put their foot down and said no this is we need the books to be at a certain size so get your act together um and quite rightly so so it's um so all we've had before is extra and uh, we are trying to fit all of this stuff it just squishes into these books um so so hard to get them into the page count but uh, so that means we've just got plenty more coming out we will be doing more adventures and more pdf stuff coming out um and possibly some other types of pdf and possibly some more accessory type things as well we're always looking to see what we can do and certainly in the case of accessories we want to do things that will enhance your gameplay yeah. all right excellent um um thank you andrew for taking the time to talk to us again of more doing stuff um uh, every um, right now, um, of course, as all things right now, we're not sure when this will be printed, but uh, there will be a link below. So if you want to pick this up at Drive to RPG or through the um, um, uh, Modifius website, you can do so. Uh, this this one we're a bit lucky with this because this one is actually out now. We released at Games Expo uh, a couple of weeks ago, so this should be if it's not already in your local game store it should be in the distribution network and if you pre-ordered with it you absolutely should probably have it by now so uh, so yeah for once it's nice we've got just the timing right rather than me going i've got this print copy and i don't know where it's coming out it's out now <laughs> you can get hold of it uh, and certainly if you still order it from the website you can get the pdf straight away and it's out on drive through rpg as well oh excellent even better news yeah. um again andrew thank you so much and uh to our viewers, um, thank you for watching. Stay safe out there. We'll see you next time.